They actually spent a good amount of time down here in Argentina. Also known as Butch Cassidy. That's uh, Sundance's girlfriend. Cadanos, Butch Cassidy. I think we can go ahead and say that this was it. This is at the actual ranch. Welcome back everyone to Argentina. We are in Rio Negro province, down south of Bariloche. And man, if you look around here, you could be forgiven, if you're from the United States, of thinking that you were out in like the western United States, out in Colorado or, or somewhere out there, California. Because it's beautiful, very, very beautiful mountains. And interestingly enough, we're out here in front of a little rural country store. And today, in this video, we're going to be talking about two very interesting uh, and infamous characters from history of the United States. And that is Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid. Now, if you didn't know already, Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid, they actually spent a good amount of time down here in Argentina. And we are going to go check that out. So come along. Thanks for clicking on the video. If you want to help out the channel and help it grow, I really would appreciate it. Click on the like button down there, the subscribe button, and the little bell next to it to be notified for when new videos drop. It really helps the channel grow because it's going to help the YouTube algorithm recognize this content and spread it to other YouTube viewers. If you'd like to support the channel monetarily, I would appreciate that as well. You can leave a super thanks by clicking this thanks button here and give a small donation to the channel. I appreciate your support. So back to the video, enjoy. So like I said, Butch and Sundance, they are infamous in the United States as outlaws from the end of the Wild West period in the like late 1800s and early 1900s in the United States. But here, from 1901 to 1905, they actually lived here in Argentina because they had fled. They had been become so infamous in the United States being chased all over by the Pinkertons, and they had fled down here to Argentina, specifically to this area around here, Rio Negro province and Chubut province, which is the province to the south. So from here at our little general store that maybe you can see there, we're gonna head south for about mm, another 45 or 50 kilometers to El Bolson and stop there just for uh, a little breather but after that we're gonna head further south and actually find the place where they actually bought a ranch um, down in uh, Chubut province now I've been told that on the property where they bought the ranch the cabin that they lived in uh, is still there and preserved. Now, I don't know if this is true or not. Um, I've actually seen a lot of things down in Chobut province near Cholila, the town nearby where they lived, uh, that claim to be the Butch and Sundance cabin. And I don't know if they're gonna be the Butch and Sundance cabin or not, but we're gonna go down there and see because the one thing that I do know is there is on the property um, where they had the ranch, there is a little restaurant slash like general store slash museum to Butch and Sundance. So let's go down and check it out. On the way, when we stop at El Bolson, we can talk a little bit more about Butch and Sundance and their infamous history, both in the United States and here in Argentina. All right, let's hit the road.
So sitting here across from the central plaza in El Monson after a delicious meal found a nice bench, nice comfy bench in the shade of a beautiful tree where we can talk a little bit about Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid. Now, their history is uh, long and infamous. Butch, Butch's history much more so uh, than Sundance. Butch's real name was Robert Leroy Parker. Butch Cassidy was uh, doing petty crimes, stepping up to even larger crimes, and eventually forming the uh, infamous group of outlaws called the Wild Bunch. All that happened before Sundance was even part of the group, or was even involved. He was actually recruited much later, about 15 years after Butch originally started like stealing stuff. Now, Butch Cassidy, back in like 1880, his very first crime, as it was, as it goes in history, was he broke into a clothing shop that happened to be closed. He was going to go there just to buy a pair of jeans, and they were closed, so he broke in. He stole the jeans, and uh, also a piece of pie, and he left an IOU note that said he would pay the next time he showed up. And the clothing store uh, owner didn't like that very much, pressed charges, but eventually he was acquitted. Eventually. He sort of stepped up to uh, more and more crimes, mostly robbery. And after robbing a bank, he fled uh, from the local law enforcement all the way out to Wyoming, which at this point in time, of course, was very, very remote. It still is, actually. For those of you viewers who are not from the United States, Wyoming has the lowest population density of any state in the United States. So there's plenty of places to get lost in Wyoming to this day. And back then it was definitely the case. So much so that uh, Butch Cassidy was able to buy a ranch along with uh, an outlaw friend of his, Ann Bassett. And he bought a ranch out there, which he eventually used to sort of form a protection racket uh, with other ranchers in the area by stealing their horses and then um, uh, offering them, offering them pr protection from horse thieves for pay. It's a very, very mafia sort of move, but that's what he did. And he was eventually convicted of horse theft and sent to prison in Wyoming. He served almost two years in prison in Wyoming and then was released. And after that was when he really started to, like, do some very serious robberies. In the last five years of the 1800s, and from about 1895 or 1896, he put together the Wild Bunch. At this point, he uh, had a bunch of criminal connections and put together a group known as the Wild Bunch. And different uh, outlaws sort of uh, rotated in and out of what was considered the Wild Bunch over the years, but eventually um, Harry Longabow, the Sundance Kid, joined the group. Now, at this point, they were stepping up from bank robberies to train robberies. And they weren't just rob robbing passenger trains, although they did that. Uh, they were robbing like mining company payroll trains and Union Pacific Railroad payroll trains. The takes that they were getting on some of these were what would be the equivalent of like a million or two million dollars in today's money. So these were huge, huge robberies. So much so to a point where Butch was able at the very, very end of the 1800s to reach out to the uh, governor of Utah and have the governor of Utah attempt to broker a deal with the president of Union Pacific Railroad that Union Pacific would drop their charges against uh, Butch and the, and the rest of the Wild Bunch in return for uh, them promising not to continue robbing their trains. And after that agreement was made, within like six months, members of the group robbed another Union Pacific train, and that was the end of it. There was no more amnesty after that, and at that point, uh, it was kind of it was kind of on. Um, they had robbed so many trains at this point, and you know millions of dollars worth of payroll from major major companies, mining companies, um, railroad companies, very 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 powerful people. And this is when the Pinkerton Detective Agency got involved. Pinkerton Detective Agency is the forerunner to the FBI. It's basically a detective agency that was hired by the U.S. government to be a national police force and to be able to police criminals who were crossing state lines. And they started to really, really come down hard on the Wild Bunch. And over the course of uh, a year or two, at the very end of the 1800s, many of the Wild Bunch were either 
arrested, um, killed in shootouts, and in these shootouts, uh, law enforcement officers were also killed. So eventually, the heat was simply too hot here in the United or in the United States, and Butch and Sundance, who at this point had a lot of money to be able to travel with, um, they went along with Etta Place, who was Sundance's girlfriend at the time. They went to New York, caught a uh, st uh, ship to South America, and they sailed down to South America. After a few months in Brazil, they eventually settled in Buenos Aires. And under assumed names, they made their way down south eventually to uh, Patagonia, down here. After settling, or after passing through um, some places down here in Patagonia, they eventually moved down south of Rio Negro province into Chubut province. And just outside of a town called Cholila, they purchased a plot of land and with a bunch of cabins on it and a bunch of horses and they started up a ranch and they lived relatively peacefully on this ranch for a couple of years but um while they were down here in argentina they continued to rob people they continued to rob um, banks and things like that they continued to stir up trouble for themselves and eventually it caught up with them so that's basic the basic history of how they got down here and how they ended up in Chubut province and of course on the way through to Chubut province they did pass through Bariloche or near Bariloche and stopped at a general store that's just outside of Bariloche city right now and is actually occupied by a little uh, restaurant Barilla, called El Boliche Viejo this is it El Boliche Viejo and it used to be a general store this was a brief stopover point for Butch and Sundance after they came into Buenos Aires on their way down to uh, Chubut province. I think that's a good a good place to stop here in El Bolson and for us to continue further south down to uh, just outside Cholila where apparently you can still see the cabins that uh, that were there on the ranch and they are right next to a place that I want to visit that's called La Legal which is a little bar restaurant and also a museum to Butch and Sundance that's like right next to the cabins so I'm hoping that it's going to be open. Uh, I don't have a phone number that I could find, so I couldn't call ahead. I'm just help we're just going to head down there. It's about an hour drive south. We're going to head down and we're going to see if it's open. I really hope it is because I would really like to see that, see the cabins, and also see the museum, and see what kind of stuff they have in there. And then also maybe get a little something to eat before we take the long drive all the way back up to Bariloche. Before we arrived at uh, Museo Bar La Legal down here near Cholila in Chubut province, I saw a little turn off and there was a sign that said Butch Cassidy Cabins. 
and the gate was open, so I figured, let's go in, and here we go. Las Cabanas, Cabanas, Butch Cassidy. The gate here looks like it's closed, but you can see the cabins. They do look pretty old. And like I said, I found a number of uh, like things on the internet, on Google Maps, different places that have said, this is the Butch Cassidy cabin, it's here. Or this is the Butch Cassidy cabin here. This was kind of the most uh, reliable one, I think. There were multiple places that I found, multiple sources that said that these are the actual ones. And also because La Legal uh, is actually right like out there. If you can see the building past the green building over there, that's La Legal, the museum slash bar, which makes sense that these would be the actual cabins. And of course, you look around. Now, if you were an outlaw, a couple of outlaws, and like one of the outlaw's girlfriends, and you wanted to flee from the United States, and you had experience having a ranch like out in Wyoming, I mean, look at this. This would be the place you'd go. It's beautiful. It's beautiful, it's remote, it's quiet. It's peaceful. So this was it. I think I think we can go ahead and say that this was it. This is at the actual ranch. And uh, it's possible, because I haven't been paying attention, I may have stepped in some horse poop. But you know what? That's just what happens when you're out on a ranch. I guess. Man, I would really like to be able to go in here, poke around inside those cabins, but looks like the gate here is closed. Uh, it's not necessarily locked, but there is like a chain and a tie around it here. So you can tell they don't want people going in here and I'm gonna obviously respect the wishes of whoever owns this property because Honestly, I think it is private property, but it's nice that they um, they left that gate out there to the driveway open so people could at least drive in here and see these things. That's pretty cool. Man, Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid. Now, for the longest time, my only like touch point for Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid was, of course, the movie, right? Paul Newman and Robert Redford, the classic uh, movie from the U.S., Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid. And uh, they kind of, in that movie, honestly, they kind of like skip over the part where they're in Argentina here. You know what I mean? Like, they actually, or the legend has it that they died up in Bolivia in a gunfight, right? Up in Bolivia. Um, and as the, their bodies have never actually been identified, right? So their conspiracy theories that they lived, that the two people that were killed up there in Bolivia, two uh, like American. Um, outlaw bandits who were killed after a robbery up there were actually not Butch and Sundance. And they've actually tried to like um, use DNA evidence from some of the living relatives to try and identify whether or not it was Butch and Sundance who died up there. And they never actually had any like conclusive results. So, I mean, who knows? They could still have lived and not died up there in Bolivia. But that movie, you know, like is great. It's a great movie, but of course it takes a lot of liberties with the actual story. And of course the actual story itself is not completely like flushed out because a lot of the times they were on the run, they were in hiding, they were trying to stay hidden, so they were staying low, using different names. So a lot of it just comes down to like rumor, conjecture, uh, secondhand accounts from people who said that they saw or met someone who later they thought ended up being Butch Cassidy or Sundance Kid or one of the other members of the Wild Bunch. In fact, where we visited, where we saw up in uh, El Boliche Viejo, the owner there 
only realized that it was Butch and Sundance who had stopped by his uh, general store at the time in 1901 after, you know, years later when, uh, when they both died. And they had made news across Argentina that they had been here, you know, robbing different places and living here for a few years. And only then did the owner put two and two together to realize that it was them. So I think there's probably a lot of that around here in Argentina. Probably a lot of people who only after uh, their death did they realize, you know, Butch and Sundance's death, did the people here realize, oh, that was them. Man, it's cool to see these cabins, though. If these are the actual, the actual cabins where uh, Butch and, uh, and Sundance and uh, Ella Place, or Etta Place, what's her name, Ella, Etta, where she lived with them. If this is the actual ones, it's pretty cool. It's pretty cool to see. Anyway, La Legal over there, which I definitely want to visit, is uh, not yet open. It's still sort of like early afternoon. I think it's gonna open up around merienda time, around like four or 4.30, which is about half an hour, 45 minutes from now. So I think, just gonna hang out here maybe or drive back out and hang out next to the La Legal in our car here, our little mule. And uh, we'll see uh, we'll see what's in there when it opens. El Museo Bar La Legal. There it is. Museo Bar La Legal. Right out here next to a field full of cows. There's this little herding dog. It's been running around the area. Right over there next to it is the, the ranch where we were, where we saw the cabins. And this place is not open. Some cool stuff out in front. Oh, there's a Butch Cassidy Wanted poster. Okay, it turns out the place is closed today, but the the husband of the guy, of the woman who owns it, the, like the family who owns it just happened to show up delivering some furniture and they let me in and said I could film inside. So here we go. We got super, super lucky on this one. So this is the back part where it used to be a general store. And out in front, this is what the restaurant looks like now. I told the guy, you know, I'm from the United States, I'm from Chicago. He said this is all very interesting for me being from the United States. And he said, well, you know, we can't, uh, we can't make you any food or anything because we're not open, but I can open it up and you can look inside while we're delivering this furniture. I said, great, that's, that's perfect. I was very worried that we were going to have to head back with nothing. Now there's a bit of a glare here on this, but these are like old records from the store, like old ledgers. And there's the, uh, poster, the fame, infamous poster of Butch Cassidy, Wanted Dead or Alive. And of course they have a cutout so you can put your face through it. $3,500 reward will be paid for the capture of uh, Robert Leroy Parker. That was his name, Robert Leroy Parker, Dead or Alive. 36 years old in 1901. 165 pounds, light complexion, blue eyes, American. Small scar under the left eye. Five foot nine, medium build, flaxen hair, cowboy by trade, bank robber, horse thief, and highwayman. Also known as Butch Cassidy. Wanted for the robbery of First National Bank in Winnemucca, Nevada. That was the big one. That robbery that made it so that they had to go on the run. Here's that photo again. Famous Fort Worth Five photo. Yeah. 
yeah, here, at a place. Recreation of, uh, or no, uh, yeah, this is her bed. At a, that's uh, Sundance's girlfriend. Wow, this is cool. I'm super, super lucky and super fortunate that we got in here. Here's a photo, some photos of the store. This is like a few decades after in 1932, but still pretty close to like what it would have looked like back then. And of course they owned, Butch and Sundance owned the ranch right next door. So they would have been in here, like quite often, probably in the general store buying stuff. Oh, here's a picture of Butch. Butch's. Oh, the Parker cabin. Yeah, this is Butch's childhood home in Utah. The setup here as a general store. Almacén de Ramos Generales. How it would be set up as a general store. Very interesting, very cool. Super glad. Super glad we saw this. I think, I think we're going to head out. I don't want to hold these guys up too long. Jorge. Muchísimas gracias. No, por favor. Mucho gusto. Disculpa la atención. Mucho gusto y muchísimas gracias. Muy interesante. Gracias. I just happened to be here when. Uh, the guys rolled up with that furniture to deliver, and uh, they let me in to, uh, to see it. Uh, Jorge, if you ever end up seeing this video, thank you very much. That was very, very cool of you. Uh, I think, though, now it's time we hit the road. We got a long drive back up to Bariloche, and uh, I want to get up there before uh, before the sun goes down. So it's time to hop in our car, head back up to Bariloche, and uh, we get up there finish off the video uh, actually it might be the next day but we're definitely gonna talk a little bit about the ultimate demise of Butch and Sundance uh, north of here up in uh, Bolivia right here in front of Lake Nahuel Huapi and uh, just like Witch and Sundance did in 1905 they'd actually been becoming more and more notorious um, even though they had tried to sort of go straight with the ranch down there in uh, Chubut province they really weren't able to do so and they continued to rob um, to rob banks and different things. And basically, anytime uh, two English speaking bandits robbed something, everybody immediately thought that it was Butch and Sundance because it was at this point well known to the authorities um, here in South America, but also the Pinkerton agencies, the Pinkerton agents who were chasing them, uh, that they were here somewhere in South America. So eventually they sold the ranch made their way back up here to Bariloche, 
they got on a steamer and they crossed the, uh, the lake here and eventually made their way up further north into San Luis province where they robbed a bank, one of the national banks of Argentina. And uh, it's quite windy down here today, so I hope you're able to hear me the wind. But they made their way up into northern parts of Argentina, San Luis province, robbed a bank up there, fled across the Andes into Chile, and then eventually made their way up to Bolivia. Now this is where they met their end in 1908 in Bolivia. They robbed a silver mine. They went back to their lodging house where they were staying, but the authorities were already on to them. And they surrounded the lodging house. A long two or three hour long gunfight ensued. And unlike the how the uh, their, their end is portrayed in the movie, um, the wonderful movie of Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid. Uh, the way that the story is told that they really ended was they were surrounded, they were wounded inside the lodging house, and eventually after the gunfight sort of died down for a while, uh, there was heard inside from inside a gunshot, a scream, and a second gunshot. And when they went inside the authorities, they found that uh, both Butch and Sundance were dead, they both had multiple bullet wounds in their bodies, but um, Sundance had one wound right in the middle of his forehead, and Butch had a wound in his temple. So that's how it ended for Butch, Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid here in South America. But before that end, they were able to have a couple of years, I think, of peace and of trying to go straight and stop robbing things here in Argentina. Um, here in Bariloche, down south in uh, Chubut province. So, that's the story. And I think that's going to be it for this video. And I really hope you enjoyed this video. I really enjoyed making it. Um, as we were taking our little mini Patagonia road trip in those other videos that we made, I knew we were going to be going close to some of the uh, Butch and Sundance um, landmarks, especially that ranch down there. And couldn't pass it up. It's a very interesting story. I hope you enjoyed it, and it's actually going to be one of the uh, final videos here from Bariloche. Very soon, we're going to be moving on uh, to another city here in Argentina. But, like I said, I hope you enjoyed this video, and uh, we will see you in the next one.